watchers, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today, I have the pleasure to feature the third piece from Axios Watches. Now, uh, Axios are, I think, gaining quite a bit of support and momentum. Um, they started with their ironclad, which was, a, you know, a superbly specced diver. I mean, it was uh, fairly generic in some of its design, but the specs they crammed in for the price was pretty amazing. Uh, and then they released their flagship, which uh, wasn't as super spec, but I, I gotta say, I love the design that they came up with, you know, a lot of vintage flair in that one. And right now they are on Kickstarter with their third piece, which uh, looks like it's gonna be a massive success because it was funded uh, very, very quickly. Now, the watch uh, comes in the standard black box with a watch roll inside. So guys, without further ado, let's flip the camera around and take a closer look at today's watch. All right, guys, so here we have the box on the table, fast becoming uh, the standard Axios packaging, I must say. This one is a little bit worse for wear after having uh, gone through to some other reviewers. Axios uh, symbol at the top here. Splitability of the box is not fantastic because, you know, I guess it's just rubbing a little bit against my table here. All right, so that's the box on the outside. Uh, watch roll, again, also not fantastically spinnable because it's got a nice grippy leather here. Okay, so just gonna undo this and show you how it looks like on the inside. If you've seen this before, if you've seen Axios watches, uh, even on my own channel, uh, let alone multiple other uh, people who have reviewed their watches. Okay, so just undoing this and showing you guys uh, closer. This is the Axios Pathfinder. Uh, this variation is called the copper, the copper dial, uh, and the variation of the watches is going to be in the dial. You can see it on the website. Uh, what uh, they have also included in the package for me is this one here, which is the salmon dial. Uh, there is also a black variation, a slate grey and I think an arctic or uh, polar white uh, version. Check out the website. And I think they've unlocked a couple of others as well, uh, perhaps crimson and meteorite, uh, plus or minus the green dial, which is uh, you know kind of the unlock goals on the Kickstarter. So I'm just going to highlight some slight differences here. So you can see uh, the copper dial, uh, th this is really the only one that has a bit of a fume finish here, okay? The, um, they, they're all sand textured uh, and this one does have a bit of a you know, darker rim, the fume effect. Uh, it has kind of gold polish type of finish on the hands and the indices, whereas this one, uh, the salmon colored one, I think the salmon colored one is also very nice, you know, the color wise, but it doesn't have the fume effect and uh, it's it's black or, or very dark uh, you know, indices and hands you know, in terms of the coating. If you want something more contrast, this is the way to go. Uh, this one sometimes can come across as slightly low contrast depending on the angle of the lighting. Uh, but I'm gonna focus on this one for this particular review. Everything else, case, bracelet, um, you know, packaging is the same. All right, so uh, MSRP is going to be 339, that's the full MSRP, but the Kickstarter price is pretty remarkable at 249 uh, with a slightly less early bird price of 279. So those prices I think are pretty good. Uh, moving on then, as I usually do, let's talk about the movement. So uh, in here, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, it's a Seiko NH35A. So yes, this is a no date watch, but it is the NH35A in here, specs down the left. Uh, it does have a ghost date wheel. You can feel it clicking uh, at the number one position. So, you know, uh, let me know what you think about that. Some people really dislike ghost dates, but this is what this watch has rated accuracy as you can see there. Uh, in use, this is pretty bang on accurate, I have to say, you know, out of the packaging here, plus two seconds per day is what this is running for me in approximately the five days I've had it uh, running nonstop. Okay, that's the movement. Uh, let's move on to the case, which is classic 40 millimeter diameter, 316L steel, uh, you can, probably appreciate the bezel is actually slightly smaller than the case. The bezel is actually 39 millimeters diameter, just to let you know. Uh, thickness, 12.2 millimeters thick. Uh, the lug width, as you might guess, is 20 millimeters. And the lug-to-lug -lug distance between my thumbs, 
47 millimeters. So pretty classic dimensions overall. Finishing, okay, let's talk about that now. Uh, the brushing uh, on the, the bezel, right, is at the top, but you can see it transitions onto a nice polish at the side. Long and shoulder brushing on the top surface of the lugs as well as, you know, most of the bracelet there. Uh, horizontal brushing on the side or I guess continuation of the longitudinal there is a pretty nicely done polished bevel right on the case uh, and then it goes on to circular brushing at the bottom so circular brushing also on that solid screw down case back with you know what is a pretty nice Pegasus motif uh, you know I'm not gonna you know, harp on too much about history but apparently that is a symbol of one of the airborne units that uh, this watch is inspired by, uh, you know, the Pegasus symbol there. Uh, and, and, you know, it's a field watch which can kind of double, I guess, it takes a lot of inspiration from Aviator watch, but, but they've ostensibly classed this as a field watch. It does have a screw down crown, so the water resistant rating here is a pretty good solid 200 meters, is what they've gone for. Right, now moving on to the dial next. So what we have here, as uh, I highlighted briefly earlier, is a sand textured fume effect copper colored dial here. It's got applied gold tone uh, logo as well as indices. It's got printing for the name of the watch, Pathfinder, that you can see uh, above the six o'clock position and a printed railroad chapter ring around the periphery. But otherwise, you know, even on that railroad chapter, there are uh, kind of raised markers with loom fill there that they've gone for. So there's, there's quite a lot of work that's gone into this particular dial. The hands are polished gold tone baton style hands, right? There's a separation uh, on the loom on the hands there, but it's nicely filled with loom. A fairly simple needle shaped uh, seconds hand without loom. And in terms of uh, the signature of the loom, C3X1 on the main hands as well as the indices and the numerals. So indices on the chapter ring as well as the uh, numbered numerals around the dial are all loomed. And of course, I'm gonna show a loom shot here for you guys to appreciate how it looks like in the dial. Okay, moving on then, above the dial is a flat sapphire crystal. Uh, not sure how much uh, AR there is in here, but I, I suspect there is some AR coating uh, that has been applied to the internal of the crystal there. All right, so that's the case. Bracelet-wise, it's, you know, it's also pretty good, I have to say. So this, they call this a customized five-piece per link bracelet. It kind of does remind me a little bit of Tank Tread. It does taper to 18 millimeter on the narrower portion here. Uh, so it's got brush finishing, right, on the top there, right, as well as the sides, but uh, if, if I can get the light capturing there, you can see there's a polished chamfer on the edges of the three center links there. So there's a nice little detail effect that they've really, you know, uh, some work definitely has gone into this bracelet. It's got solid end links uh, and pleasingly in this case, uh, can I show you, it's got screw link adjustment. Hopefully you can appreciate that. There's a screw link adjustment for this bracelet, a pretty solid machined uh, push button uh, deploying class there, okay, and six point micro adjustment with a fairly solid keeper as well. Okay, so that's the entire description uh, of this watch. Let's just step it on the wrist now for the wrist shot for you guys. And there we have it, guys. This is the Axios Pathfinder, okay, in uh, in copper dial on my 17 centimeter wrist. So remembering. Uh, the lug to lug distance, 47 millimeters, fits me fine and fits, I think most guys I know will wear this fine. 40 millimeter diameter, 12.2 millimeter thickness, and that's how it looks like with that, you know, very, very nicely slim profile, I have to say. This bracelet is actually a pretty darn good one. Okay, that's how it looks like. All right, and that's it, guys. What are my thoughts about this? What do I like about this? Well, look, I think this is a quality piece, another quality piece from Axios. It's got fair specs for the price, you know, definitely not a spec monster like the Ironclad was, but hey, it's got that Seiko movement. Nothing wrong with it, absolutely reliable. Of course, it's ubiquitous, but absolutely reliable movement. Uh, it's got Sapphire Crystal, it's got very good water resistant rating, right? This can be an everyday watch. Screw links on the bracelet, 
and pretty darn good loom, I have to say. Uh, I think overall, this is an, tr an attractive take on the feel watch style with a degree of vintage flair, right? They've, they've gone for copper and fume, and that really gives a nice vintage flair, I feel. And it, yet, it's still an original design. You know, they've, they've gotten original touches on this watch, particularly with the, you know, custom bracelet, as well as, you know, going their own way with the feel style uh, dial there. And on top of that, also classic sizing of 40 millimeters. Uh, what are the slight weaknesses? Well, um, not much to say, but look, I'll, I'll say that the case is fairly generic. That you're not going to write home too much about this case. You know, you've seen this before, but there's nothing wrong about this. Yet. You know, in fact, it's appropriate for this feel style watch that they've designed. Uh, the NH35 with the ghost state will probably cause some frowns that will annoy some people, but hey, you know, it's perfectly functional. Maybe they could have gone for the NH38A, which would be a slight step up and probably appreciated by many. So guys, there you go. My thoughts on this piece. Let's flip the camera around now for the wrap up. So there you go, guys, my review of the Axios Pathfinder. Let me know what you think. Definitely, it's uh, going to be a success. The campaign is already fully funded, and I think they've really only got one more stretch goal, perhaps, to hit before, you know, everything is exhausted. Uh, so look forward to your thoughts. You know, I think uh, there are a lot of positives about it. It is a, a very reasonable take, I feel, on uh, the Field Style watch, and it does function fairly well, I think it fits in that niche of uh, what you might consider an everyday watch. So guys, let me know what you feel in the comments below. Look forward to hearing uh, your thoughts on this. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me. And as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.